Well, as the treasurer indicated, I think this really would provide an opportunity to open the state's checkbook to uh, citizen review. And uh, as I mentioned in my remarks, this will allow all the expenditures that take place uh, to be opened up for people to take a look at. So uh, where the money's going, how much money's going there, uh, and so forth. So I think it'll be a fairly comprehensive process we're putting in place. And we're working with the treasurer's office to get the details right on this, um, should the bill move all the way through the passage, to make sure that they have the resources they need to, to get the job done on it. But I think they've already set a very good precedent uh, by putting the transparency project in place on the state employee salary side of things. So we're building that with this bill. Will it involve public-private partnerships? It just applies to state agencies and just at the state level. So um, you know, there's certain things that will not be included in this. Local government, um, you know, quasi-governmental agencies, uh, Jobs Ohio may come up as a, a question. So we'll just answer that right now. That, that is not a state agency, so that doesn't apply in this particular case. Um, any information that's that's uh, confidential, that can't be uh, uh, can't be exposed. So things that have um, names and addresses of peace officers, for example, that kind of confidential information would not be included in this process. But otherwise, a very comprehensive look, I think, at general assembly expenditures and then expenditures across the various state agencies of Ohio government. Uh, what would the cost of this program? <clears throat> I don't know that we've looked at, uh, at the full cost yet. The treasurer may have a, an answer on that. We put a few dollars and cents together for us. Uh, we volunteered at the treasurer's office to uh, house this uh, online checkbook and to absorb the cost of it. Uh, and we think uh, with the expertise, uh, technical uh, expertise in our office, uh, we can uh, house this uh, hopefully at minimal cost uh, and uh, we can absorb the costs internally in our office. Uh, we've been in communications with the uh, state of Texas Comptroller's Office, Susan Combs down there, uh, where they've done a similar thing, and uh, we're in communication with other state governments around the country, and uh, we believe the cost uh, can be minimal, and through leveraging partnerships with uh, nonprofit organizations in the private sector, uh, we're hopeful that uh, um, we can uh, not reinvent the wheel, but instead uh, look how it's been done in other places and uh, try to uh, try to mirror that. I don't know if anyone from the Buck Institute or Ohio Bird wants to come up here and make any statements. But. Sure. Um, in our research at the Ohio Public Interest Research Group, we found that this kind of transparency, um, it's it's a big project to get all this information online, but it can be done for very low cost. Uh, particularly um, very wise to go to other states that are already doing a good job, replicate um, their web coding and the input they might have on how to get it done. Um, there are state governments that are willing to share this information for free, so it definitely can be done at a low cost, and it is truly worth it to provide that transparency for Ohioans. Does all this stuff already run through the treasurer's office? <clears throat> do all these expenditures, do these already run through your office? Uh, we'll need to work with the OBM because the Office of Budget Management through the Oak system uh, really manages this. So uh, this will have to be a, a partnership and cooperation with uh, the Office of Budget Management. And uh, you know, we're hopeful and, and confident that uh, um, the uh, folks over there will partner with us. So it, it's really the OBM expertise and professionals uh, where most of this uh, runs through now. Um, obviously, we touch it um, because uh, you know, we uh, disbursements uh, come out of our office, the actual uh, uh, expenditures. but. Um, this will have to be a partnership uh, with the OEM. Other than those news reporters, does anyone actually look at this? Um, it, do you have any you know, data, any, uh, anything that you can point I, to? I think, well, let me give one anecdote. I want to call the folks in the Buckingham Institute to, to talk to this. When we took the public employee data and put it on our website, um, unfortunately, and fortunately, uh, there was so much traffic that the website uh, virtually crashed. Um, it was, you couldn't get on there because there were so many citizens throughout the state of Ohio trying to access it, and we just didn't have the bandwidth to, to handle it. Uh, as far as exact numbers, maybe folks in the Buckeye can come up and we can talk with specificity about the uh, popularity of this information among citizens. Uh, it's definitely uh, very popular from our experience. I, uh, unfortunately, I don't have to write the, the current exact numbers, but if you look at our website, uh, at any time you can see a rotating uh, number, of, number of searches that are being done. Uh, and so you can see the, Literally, millions of searches have been done since we started this pro uh, project back in 2010, I believe is when it was started with the latest. And, you know, we've tried to do the state employee information, the teacher information, uh, and, and, you know, because transparency is a, is, a, is a key thing. It's one of our monitors. We think it's a disinfectant. Uh, we've tried to do some local government stuff, and, and so transparency writ large is a very imperative. And I can say, too, we get a lot of calls all the time from people who, who need help or want to 
a certain name and some assistance and things like that on, on a fairly regular basis. So it's, it's definitely, to answer your question, very popular. Now, will you continue? I know you said that, Representative Lilla, you said that you're not going to do the local governments and that sort of thing, and you have those on your website. So are you going to continue that? And what about the teachers? Are they considered local government? Uh, how, how will that be handled? Well, as it relates to how we work with our database, uh, we are able to continue to do uh, state workers and teachers, and yes, we do local government. And so it's actually an ongoing issue because we actually have to solicit that through public records requests to individual entities. And it's one of the big challenges of transparency, quite frankly, across the board, is just the time and, and effort that goes in. Uh, you know, we're, we're a nonprofit organization with small staff. We do many other things besides that. We believe very strongly in transparency. But it's very difficult to go forward and get all of this information on an ongoing basis and to do it on an annual basis for all of the entities that there are, I mean, county governments and all of that. So to the extent that we can, we will continue to do as much as we can on the, on the local government side of things. Uh, and we'll continue to do what we've been doing uh, historically uh, as well with the state salaries and teachers. Is this a direct answer to the D plus ranking that we got? Like, is there anything to say this will definitely move our score up in the next year? Uh, it's, it's your score. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So uh, when Ohio received a D plus, it was a bump up from our D from the year before. Um, part of that is because um, in our annual following the money report from Ohio Perk, we have moved up the standards. Uh, just a decade ago, a number of states had nothing like this. Um, since we've been doing this report year after year, grading states, we've seen um, we're at a point now where every single state has some type of expenditure website where it's searchable for citizens to see tax expenditures. Um, so I, I definitely believe this will raise our score. Uh, this bill, um, from what I've seen so far, does directly address some of the concerns we raised. And so Ohio Perk is very excited about that. Um, but we're looking to help. It is a first step, um, but I think it's a solid first step. And I'm looking forward to providing any support I can to help it continue. Is there something to it that it's not only just a matter of putting the information out there, but for the website, for the database to be user friendly, is that a, an element to it? Absolutely. So there are some states that put tax expenditure information online, but it's not searchable. That control F isn't going to help you find the information you're looking for. Other times that information is put online, but it doesn't say who it's going to specifically. So it might say we spent this much on window washing for this state building, but we don't know which private company got all those contracts to do that, that kind of work. So um, actually listing who the contractors are, making sure it is a searchable database, and then also making sure it really is checkbook format. So when I go to the bank online to look at how I'm spending my money, that same format, so it's easy and simple and straightforward, is really important. Um, but, but from what I've seen so far, those are the goals.